All right, what is going on, people? You know that sound. It is the Unfiltered Band. It means, yes, another episode of Unfiltered coming your way here. And now, officially, this will go down as episode number 148, Superstitions and Sports. Don't be superstitious, just stitious. And get on board the Unfiltered Revolution. Thank you, Unfiltered Band. Jumping in the uh, Twitter side of things, at Casey Stern. Get in the bio, get on the YouTube channel, watch all the interviews, like, comment, questions, ideas for lists, interviews, whatever you'd like. And, of course, welcome to uh, most of you who are listening on the Apple, Spotify, and uh, podcast variety of things. Uh, equal opportunists are we. We're always presented by our good friends at Bet Online, who remain your number one source for your sports betting needs this season. It's everything from NFL playoffs to pro college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You always get the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends over at Bet Online. Live betting options, free contests, live scores, almost any sport or game imaginable. Bet Online, truly really the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V. To receive your rewards, it's betonline.ag where the game starts as we get started here. And I'm going to throw this out a bunch today, but this is really a sourcing kind of a quick on the fly episode I wanted to drop out there because I was thinking about this this morning. And you know, these are the things I think about on a Sunday as we get ready for the double dose of NFL uh, championship games, find out who's going to get to the Super Bowl, which we're excited about uh, this afternoon, this evening. I was thinking about superstitions in sports, and I'm throwing this out there as kind of like a sourcing episode of this podcast. I want you to write down or think about or post if you can on your phone. As we go through this conversation, what your greatest superstitions in life or as sports fans are, the ones that maybe would make me think you're nuts or other people think you're nuts, and I'm going to give you some of mine, all right? And I want you to hit me up on Twitter at Casey Stern. Reply to when I uh, dole out the post later on today or get into the comments on YouTube or shoot me a line. If uh, really you can't tell everybody else what you want to tell me, I'll keep it between us. Get me on the DMs. Because I'm really, this is a an outsourcing of how many other people go through this and fan side and media side and human side of superstitions. Which, by the way, also one of my favorite uh, Stevie Wonder tunes ever. And greatest of guitar riffs ever. Also, Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, did it fantastic uh, both ways. Bow, 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 bow. And now it's in my head. Uh, we don't. We can't afford that on this show for the clearing. Otherwise, I'd play that in the background. Instead, we have the unfiltered band. Which, by the way, always, just in case, I know you're very curious. Always at our disposal, the unfiltered band. And they do play different tunes. Yeah, we got that one. They don't have titles, so if you have names for these, feel free. I'll let the band know. Uh, we continue here, episode 148. Let's get going. So I was thinking about this this morning, and I'll tell you why. You know I'm a diehard, whether you're a hockey fan or not. You know I'm a diehard Islander fan. I've talked about this, I mean, geez, 20 years on the air. Even not doing hockey, I've talked about how they are my favorite team in any sport. And if you go cycle back and you're a if you're not part of the YouTube scenario, you'll want to be because I do some early bird specials. I call them a little special ditties that are not, you know, pod episodes on there. And one of them I did was just unloading on the Islanders and how pissed off I was going about about a week and a half ago, or maybe a week ago. I have not. And let me go back this way just to kind of set the stage here. And I'm not going to go into how bad they've played and everything that's going on. You can go watch that episode or listen to it. Or if you're a hockey fan, whether you're an Islander fan or an Islander hater, you already know that they've been abysmal. I mean, January, one of the worst months that they've had in a long, long time. And they had a terrible year last year. And it reminds you of just the worst of the worst. All right. Let me give you some backdrop. And this is how I'll get into this and, and why this came up today for me to do as the next episode. All right. I think you're going to enjoy it. And probably a lot of you are going to be like, oh, my God, I do that. And how stupid are we? But I sat there and over the years, and I don't want to over-exaggerate, I have spent, and people who worked with me can tell you, spring trainings for those who used to listen to the spring training tour that I did for, I think, 12 or 11 of the 12 years that I was with Sirius XM. I would go for a month and we'd go visit with every team. If you didn't listen to me there, you're new to me here, or you like me from the NBA stuff or whatever. Basically, we'd go and we'd have a different show that would be put out every day. Some of it was live. Some of it wasn't. It was three, four hours. We had all the guests from your favorite team, the manager, the GM, and we put together like a team show a day. 
And I used to do, you know, depending upon the year, either all the teams or half the teams in Florida and Arizona is sometimes both. All right. Over the course of a month. During that time period, what you didn't see that the people who worked with me would tell you is that every single night that there was an Islander game, I watched it. Not listen to it. I watched it on my phone. If we were out at dinner or at a bar with the coworkers or whatever, I had it on. If it was in a meeting, I had it on. Unless I was doing an actual show for baseball, it was on. And if that was the case, it might have been on the background on my phone on silent. Every single game. I can honestly tell you that outside of family and kid-related things that would negate my ability to watch it, or being on the air on TV, which would negate my ability to watch it, that outside of those things, so any other day where it was capable, I choose this or I choose that, or I have to do it at the same time, I probably had not missed an Islander game in about 10 years, even with kids and everything else. If I had to watch it belated, I would. If I had to avoid the score and watch it the next morning, I would. Like 10 years. Eventually, you know, and I've been dying with this team forever. Eventually, they lured me all the way back in, in terms of, you know, not caring. I've always been there, but actually believing. Got to back-to-back -back conference finals, made it to a game seven, lost one nothing in that game seven, easily could have won it. Thought they were going to win it, admittedly, going into it. Going back in 2020. In a run that I've said before, I mean, really uh, was as important as anything sports related as a fan that's ever happened in my life because of the time period that it happened and what it meant to me. And I'll cherish it the rest of my life, however long that is. But they, they came up short. But after that, they had and with a new building coming. Right. So everything, you know, drawn in and look, I'm a Nick fan and a Met fan. So, you know, I deal with that, too. Right. So I, I had plenty of losing. All right. They drew you all the way back in, and then I got to a scenario where they ended up firing maybe the best coach in hockey who had ended up turning their team around. They had a terrible year in the new building, and they had the worst year they've had in years a year ago. In the offseason, they did Jack and What Comes With It, family show. They did nothing. So I was aggravated coming into this year, but they actually played fairly well. Great goaltending. There are a number of reasons. I'm not going to make this a hockey show. It's about superstitions. But recently in January have been awful. And I got, you know, tick, 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 and tick, 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 tick. The bomb was about to go off, and I was about to blow the gasket, and eventually there we went. Right on Twitter and right here on my YouTube channel just a, maybe about a week ago. A little less. Must be a little less. I bring that up because, and from what I see in the, the Twitter sphere, and I have not even watched the highlights. I just saw the tweets come across my timeline and I got the notifications of the goals and the end of the game. I have not watched a single second of the last two games. They won them both. They're going into the all-star break now, just two points, at least last I checked, two, maybe three points out of a playoff spot. Even though the other teams, I think it's the Penguins, have a couple of games at hand. They're only two, they're, for those who don't know, two points is a win. They're like a win out of a playoff spot. Suddenly, they're, they're right back sucking you back in. But I missed two games in a decade that I could have watched. As home, I could have watched them. And that I, I chose, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. I'm not putting myself through this. The other night, I, I was not, I was like on Netflix just watching TV. I had nothing to do. I could have easily watched it. Kids are sleeping. I'm there. I'm, I'm in it. And I'm not doing it. And they won. And then they won again yesterday when I didn't watch. And now... I need to know, and I'm asking you, I'm sourcing this out there because I got the all-star break to think about it, and I'm being dead serious. As dumb, This is how crazy we are as fans, right? Do I not watch until they lose? I'm thinking they can't go on a winning streak the rest of the year, and I'm going to watch again because I was always going to watch again. I was taking a break because I needed it for my own sanity. But do I now wait until they lose to watch again? And in my mind, it's like a no-brainer that, yes, I have to now wait until they lose. Once they lose, it'll reset whatever tally of karma is going on with this universe, with the Islanders, and with my brain, and then I can go ahead and watch the game. Now, how absolutely dumb is that? 
they're going to win or lose because of me watching or any one of you watching or is any one of you watching your favorite team or listening to them or sitting in the seat you usually sit in or wearing the shirt you usually wear? It's like in Silver Linings Playbook with De Niro, great movie for those who haven't seen, or a million other movies about fans who are just completely out of their damn minds. Does it really matter? Of course it doesn't matter. They didn't win because I didn't watch, but this is what happens. Now they won because I didn't watch. Now they're 2-0. and They're undefeated, mind you. Let's go, baby. We're undefeated when I don't watch. This is superstitions in sports. Have you been there? Now, I'm there when it's not sports. It doesn't have to be a no-hitter for me. Let's get to no-hitters. I remember being on the air. Now, I have not called a no-hitter. I've been to two. I have not called a no-hitter. But I remember, I remember being on the air during the perfect during the game that uh, was a no-hitter. It wasn't a perfect game. A no-hitter that uh, Doc Halliday threw against the Reds in his first postseason start. At the time, Jim Bowden and I were doing our afternoon drive show at Sirius XM. And I remember consciously like playing with and kind of toying with, because the audience knew, I mean, look, we're not dealing with 15 years ago. I wasn't the only person telling them. They got, you know, Twitter, you know, the at bad app, God bless it. And I know the people who run it, you know, five innings in, they're telling you he's got a no hitter, which always drives me nuts. So you knew they had everybody locked in. You knew people knew on social, but there I am on the air and I'm not even covering the game. I'm watching it as I'm doing the show. Clearly I turned it on. Now I get it. You get it. It's at the playoffs and it's a no hitter. And I'm thinking to myself, well, geez, am I supposed to talk about this on the air? Because you're not supposed to mention no hitter. You're supposed to say, so far, there hasn't been a blemish. Or, so far, it's been a very special day. Check out the box score. Or some weird garbage like that, as if because I said it's a no hitter, it's not going to be one. I love when we see on Twitter, and I, I feel bad for the guys who have to deal with it, because it's ridiculous, but have you ever seen on Twitter when, heaven forbid, somebody mentions on Twitter that there's a no-hitter, go check it out? Then they go back, thanks, jackass, you just ruined the no-hitter. Really? Really? You know how many people without a check mark tweeted it, that weren't at the game tweeted it, but that guy's tweet ruined it? Or you said it's a no-hitter, and somewhere the gods, like with Henry Rowan Gardner, when they fixed his arm, they unfixed things with Halliday or whoever, and the late Doc Halliday, love him, God bless, and, and whoever it may be at the time, and then there's not going to be one, I could have made, I wouldn't, look, I love Dwight Gooden. I didn't want him to throw a perfect game or a no-hitter with the Yankees. Could I have stopped that? Because I would have said something if I could have made that stop. They want to see David Cohn do it. Could I have stopped that? I would have made that stop. How do I stop that from happening? Could I have stopped, uh, you know, uh, Carlos Beltran from taking the, the curveball to Adam Wainwright and made him swing? Because what, what, what could I have said to made him swing? I would have I made him swing. I promise I would have made him swing. What could I have said? But this is what happens. What is the superstition for you that you don't want to admit? Let me admit some to you now. Because I didn't realize, and this is what happens to me. So this morning, having a cup of coffee, and I'm thinking about the Islanders winning the two games. And I'm like, I don't even know if I should look at highlights. I saw the interviews after. I'm like, okay, like this is... So the box score, in case okay, Sorokin, and then Varley was great. And okay, these names mean nothing. You're not an Islander fan. And like, oh, like this is great. And I started thinking about, oh, my God, like this is how I am. And then I realized how much worse I am than I thought. Let's go into it. Let's start with sports. Because I've seen plenty of these. Look, you know, players do this all the time, right? Wade Boggs ate chicken every day. Turk Wendell jumped over all of the white lines. I mean, we've had all kinds of weird things. I've heard players wearing the same underwear. I've seen players ask to, to you know, have other people's bats who, if they're hot, I've seen this in the batting cage. This is real, people. And they've rubbed, can I rub your bat? I mean, I've, I've seen all kinds of things, all right? Like, you know, that single white female movie, like, what can I do that you've been doing? And I want to copy it exactly. Like, we are all superstitious in our own way. Athletes are the same way. Everyone's the same way, right? Let me give you some. Some maybe there are that big a deal. Some there are others. And I start to believe in these, all right? I remember the first one I got was, at, A Few Good Men's my favorite movie. And if you've ever seen that movie, Tom Cruise says, I can't think without my bat. 
Now, I haven't done this probably since I'm probably in my mid-20s, but anyone who's watching or listening to this as a friend of mine or uh, somebody who's in my family or anybody I dated or anybody like it, it, during that time of my life, probably from like mid-teens to 20 for a decade, I literally would walk around the house, like unless I was driving a car out, I'd watch every game with the bat in my hand. I'd be thinking about work things with the bat in my hand. I'd be pacing and stressed out with the bat in my hand. And I had a bat, a Louisville slugger that was there, not to hit anyone with. It wasn't like a swing and out scary. But I would do like batting stances and fake swings outside, look at my reflection into the window, and I would think. And I would just think with my bat because I, I got that from the movie. It, it did nothing. I, I promise you it got me nowhere. But, you know, because I really my career didn't even start nearly take off for, or anything until way after that. So the bat was not doing garbage for me. But this is where I was, I think, without my bat. Dave Meggett, now not good, had issues with the law. Forget, you know, I don't say forget that, but this was way beforehand. When I happen to really like Dave Meggett, if you're a football fan, he was about 5'6", 130 maybe. One of the short, I mean, you know, maybe he couldn't have weighed 130, but he, if I 150 maybe. He was one of the smallest dudes. I mean, imagine like a Darren Sprolsey type guy. Right. Not as good, but great, you know, good to great punt kick returner and was one of the best third down backs in the league for a while. Bill Parcells had him in New York with the Giants and then took him to the Patriots. I wonder if he was was he even on the Jets, too. I don't know. He's on the Pats, too. And I think he was part of that Super Bowl team uh, when Bledsoe was there, when they made it to the Super Bowl, uh, lost to Green Bay. But he was my favorite player. And I used to like when I would go to giant games, I'd be like the only guy with a maggot jersey I had made for me. And you'd be like in the urinal, like with like everybody like side to side. And you know, at the time I wasn't even really old enough to drink. And everybody's like, you know, drunk. And they're like, dude, look, this kid's got a maggot jersey. How cool. And they give me high fives. And then you go grab the Purell because you're in a urinal. Right. But like it was like a big thing. Well, funny as I should have it. Right. And that jersey. I happened to be wearing that jersey at a Monday night football game that they lost to the Dallas Cowboys. I was wearing it in a Monday night football game, in which I was very upset about that loss of the Dallas Cowboys. But what I did not know is that my two friends I was with had heard about this show Dream Job and were refusing to take no for an answer. And instead of after the game driving me back to Long Island, dropped me off online like five hours before the ESPN Zone auditions open. And I was the sixth person ever to audition for Dream Job. And it changed my whole life and gave me a career. And I was wearing that old, decrepit Dave Meggett jersey during the auditions and during that whole day. So it became a big deal. I couldn't wear it out after everything that happened to him with, with the jail time. But, like, you know, you understand where I'm coming from. Eminem, lose yourself from 8 Mile. Every single audition for every job anybody's ever heard or seen me that I've ever had, from MSG to... Uh, MLB.com to uh, Sirius XM, yes, to Turner, yes, the day that I went in there. The last thing, I even ones I didn't get that you don't even know about. So it's not like I got them, you know, it wasn't, I didn't bat a thousand. But every single one, it was the last song I heard. At the time, I didn't have Air AirPods. It would be like in the car or it would be like with my headphones before I took them off, put them in my briefcase. Every single audition you have ever seen me do. And the last thing I heard before the first time I was ever on air at Turner, before the first time I was ever on air at Sirius XM, before the first time I was ever on air at MLB Duck, every single time, the last thing I heard in my ears before I, I walked in, after using the restroom, before I went to sat down and get mic'd up, every single time was that song. Just became a thing. I got a job after listening to it. I think it was MLB.com, and I was like, okay, I got to listen to this every single time. And then it became every single time. This is what happens, right? But sometimes it doesn't go your way. I had a lucky shirt and a tie that I used to wear all the time. And then I wore that shirt and tie combo during one of the worst days of my life, and I threw it out. Doesn't always work that way. In 1996, I got rid of a car because I got out of a, a relationship and got cheated on and didn't want to think about the person who was in the car anymore. So within a week, I got rid of a car. I then had the same thing happen to me again and had to get rid of a car in 2021 because to me it would became like superstitious. It's like bad juju or whatever they say. Like uh, it became superstitious or stitious or either way. That's how it's been. 
Like I'll throw out clothes. If something happens, it's good. I'm where if I'm drinking out of a mug that works, I do it. Like, I don't know like where it's. And then I go back and I circle back to the no hitter, which I know I'm not affecting. I circle back to the Islanders who I know aren't two and oh because of me. And I circle back to all of it. And then it's like, I want to rip up all these ideas and shred them into like a hundred pieces because what kind of garbage is stupid thing is that? I know it has nothing to do with it. But I think what happens in superstitions, and this is what it really is all about, is what we realize is these superstitions make us feel better. They make you more confident in yourself. They make you more confident in a team and players you can't control. If you're gambling, oh, my God. I, now, look, I don't gamble. The last time I placed a bet, and no one presented by bet online, God bless everybody who does it. The last time I placed a bet was back in college, I think I was, Whatever year I know, I know what it was. Was I in college when it happened? Maybe just after. It was when uh, Chris Chandler and Jamal Anderson, and ironically the Atlanta Falcons, were getting the most points I think anybody's ever gotten in a Super Bowl. And I had teased them even backwards. I think they were getting like twenty-four points or something like that. And I teased it with the over/under, which I ended up hitting on, but they got blown out by more than I even had teased them back to. I don't remember what it was. A fifty-five ten. Or is that the Redskins one? Somebody's going to, at the time, they were called the Redskins. That's not a faux pas. But somebody's going to tell me what it was. But whatever that Chandler, that Jamal, that Dirty Bird Super Bowl, it's the last bet I ever made. Because at the time, it was like I had $200, and I think I bet it all. And I was like, this is the worst decision I've ever made. And it was, right? So I don't gamble. But I know people in my life who have had actual gambling problems, and I've seen it. And they'll be like, this is where the drop of coffee went on the newspaper. I've seen that, legit. And that's who we need to bet. Like gamblers have like superstitions like I never seen before. But I think it's like for our own psyche that these are the things we do to create confidence for ourselves or for these teams that we can't control. Like imagine how superstitious a GM of a team or a coach has to be. Like, could you imagine like you're, you're like, you know, I don't even know what it is. Like your daughter accidentally painted your toenail, you know, blue when she was, you know, you weren't paying attention and laughed about it. And then, you know, your team, you know, went in and won something or you win a bet. Maybe you're painting them blue the rest of your life till you lose. Like I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. And sometimes people think they're winning and they're not even winning. I hate to do the Rosie Perez. Sometimes when you win, you lose. When you lose, you tie. I've told this story in here yeah, before. God bless. And I, you know, um, just because I, I have... I think the first time I told it was because I knew how much Cliff Floyd was going to laugh and he had a giggling fit on air that I had to tell it on the air. And it wasn't really private because there were other people in the casino that saw it. It was not like an off the record conversation. So it, it felt like, OK, and it, it really because and I'll tell it again, because, you know, it's kind of like a sweetheart of a guy who like, OK, like that's that's funny, even though maybe you're kind of making fun of it a little bit. But I was once in a, in a casino in Puerto Rico. I think it was at the San Juan, the El San Juan, a great hotel. And there's a Caribbean series was down there and Guillermo Moda, Gimo, former Met uh, Dodger among, I don't know where else others. Um, he was, well, I didn't even know it was him, but at the time, but I was at a table playing, uh, playing blackjack and the roulette table was right to the left. And there was, I could not see a guy sitting down and like a host of people, including you know, several you know, very good looking women that were all crowded around and, and holding their drinks up and cheering. It was constant noise. And I had just lost a hand. And I think probably was one of those situations where I hate in blackjack where the guy at the end is screwing it up for the rest of the table. I get up because I can't speak of superstitions like that dude. That dude gets a wedgie or lady like whoever. I mean, you come in and you're like asking, can I split these? If you have two tens, I want to smack you. Right. Like I get it from the table. I know right away that juju bad. I'm sure hit me up Twitter or, uh, you know, uh, DMs or YouTube that happened to you. I'm sure it has. But in any case, here's Gmo and he's, I, I see, I didn't know it was him at the time. I, I screaming and I hear all this ruckus. So before I went back up to my room to go to bed, it was late. I was like, I got to see what this is. So, I, you know, sometimes you just people like at a craps table. I don't know how to play craps. Admit it. I, I've tried to kind of get into it. I can't get into it. I've been to casino in years, but when I used to go, I, I can't, I used to go to Atlantic city all the time when I lived in New York. Like I can't really get into it craps uh, but i love the excitement of it I'll, I'll people watch a little bit and, and stop myself from losing money or gambling any for a little bit you know and you know have a cocktail and watch it if friends are there i find it interesting i just can't and i love the energy of it i just it's just not my thing right i'm a blackjack guy roulette sometimes and i play poker but not good enough to play at a casino um so there's all this ruckus and all the screaming going on and i turn around and, and i realize it's gear momoda 
And he has like, yeah, I don't know by stacks how much it was. It was several thousand dollars of chips for sure. I mean, a lot of money. I mean, look, they're baseball players. It's a lot of money. It chips stacked up in front of him and everybody cheering. He was the only one playing. It was, I thought it was like tons of people playing like at a craft. It was just him, but he must have been winning so much that there was so much hubbub, right? And there were also people pleasers there that I'm sure he was taking out and about and whatnot, right? Because, you know, he was, you know, he's here's an athlete, right? So I was there for about a minute before I realized what was occurring. I realize this is more of a gambling than a superstition story, but you'll want to hear it. It's funny. So I realize as I'm watching him win, that he's not really, he's hearing winner every time. Winner, winner. And that's all I kept hearing. And then the girls would go, yay. And then the guys would go, yay. Winner, winner, winner. But he's only really replacing the stacks and gaining very little. What is he doing exactly? And I play roulette. So I found it interesting what he was doing. He was putting... <laughs> He was putting chips on every number. (laughs) He had, so he would legitimately, let's say, take, now they weren't all the same amount, so sometimes he'd win, and sometimes he'd break exactly even, sometimes even lose. But he'd say winner, because he had from double zero all the way through 36, even and odd, right? All three rows. I mean, he couldn't lose. In terms of, he'd be announced a winner every single time. But he wasn't really winning everything. It was like a team fighting to win, going through all of it, celebrating, and then realizing they're one and one. They're five and five. They're at 500. They can't get over the hump, right? We're still hitting 200. Why aren't I hitting any better? Well, we're going one for five every day, so you're 200. Yes, you got a hit, but you lost four other times, right? That kind of a thing. And sometimes he'd hit on one. So he'd have two. He might have two chips on one, one on another. He felt that number. So he put three, but he was covering his bases. So he would always get, you know, 36 times, whatever. For those who don't play roulette, you put out five dollars, you get 36 times that on a five dollar chip. For example, I think it was probably a twenty five dollar table, but regardless, and you get the stack of money. But all the other chips you put out are gone unless it, it fits into the even and the odd and, and whatever that row might be, you know, of the, the left, the middle and the right row. Right. I forget what they say at the bottom. So I, I just I found it like fascinating to watch that. But he felt so good winning that it really didn't even matter that he wasn't making money at that point. And that is what happens when we get superstitious. And that is what happens when we get the feeling of winning anything or when our teams win anything. We just want to repeat that feeling. And whatever the hell we got to do, we could even fool ourselves just to repeat that feeling over and over and over again. Should I watch the Islanders on the other side of the All-Star break? If you were me, are you telling me you're not feeling what I'm feeling, which is I don't watch until they lose? Then it resets. Some kind of a, uh, you know, the the space-time continuum, if you will, gets reset. I am curious your answer. I need your advice. We always need you here on board the Unfiltered Revolution, where we, as always, are presented by our good friend at BetOnline.